build on what we did last time. So last time we introduced the concepts of tags in HTML. And today what we're going to do is we're going to sort of flesh out the, the page that we created. Because last time, strictly speaking, we created a, a piece of a web page. We didn't create an entire web page. So we're going to finish that up. And we're going to talk a few more things about tags. So I'm going to start off by downloading the example that I had yesterday. If, by the way, I was going to say if you're having problems viewing these videos, here's what you do. But it kind of makes a it kind of doesn't make sense to say that on a video, right? <laughs> yeah, because you can't watch the video. You get yeah. Um, some people, based on their browser security issues, have problems viewing it. So if you, if any of you that are hearing this have problems like rewatching it, because I know this is very compelling and, and it's hard. It's like arrested development. You've got to watch it over and over and over to get all the references and everything. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it, it's funny. Uh, you, you know, they actually, the procedure here is to make it like, really difficult for students like to download your videos and all that yeah and it's like I put it you know I just put it on YouTube and people are like aren't you afraid of like people manipulating I love it if they did that you know I mean uh, yeah it's like I would I would encourage them to sign up for my uh, multimedia class if that was the case you know yeah you, yeah yeah you might as well get credit for it if you're going to do it, you know. All right, at any rate, let's bring up the example that we had last time. Um, so I downloaded the zip file. And let me expand the zip file. It's important to do that, um, especially later on when we get into having uh, pages that refer to other pages. Sometimes people will compress it. Then they'll try to view the page within the compressed file. And that's not going to work because a compressed file or a compressed folder or whatever they call it um, is really everything sort of smashed together in one file. So the files aren't really there. So like if you create an image or you have a link, it's not going to work. You have to expand it first. Now I'm going to go and do the one thing that I urge all of you to do and that is to go in and allow to be able to see file extensions. Now, this depends on the particular operating system, version of Windows, whether you're on a Mac or whatever. But in Windows, there's an option that says hide, hide extensions for known file types. We want to turn that off. And now we see that the file is actually the full name of the file, fi uh, first.html. Now, if we double click on it, because it's an HTML file, it's going to open up within the browser. And whatever the default browser is on this particular machine, it's, it's uh, Internet Explorer. How then do you open it up uh, in Notepad to work on it or whatever your text editor is? Well, there's a bunch of ways. You can write mouse on it and say open with, and then you can choose a program. I wouldn't change the default for this um, program, but you can go into Notepad this way and... Just drag it in to open it. Yeah. Or whatever. Again, I can't stress this enough because I, I, I still get students asking about, like, do I send in the text file or the HTML file? There's just one file. All right. It, it's just two different views of the same file. In this case, we're actually seeing the code. And within the browser, we're seeing what users would see if they actually went out if you put this on the web and they went and viewed it via, via the browser. All right. Tags are things that look like this. They use the angle brackets, and then you have the name of the tag, and then you have the partner to this tag, the closing tag. This is a starting tag. This says, from here on until we hit the end of this tag, this piece of text has a special meaning. And in this case, the H1 indicates that 
What's special about this is it's a top level heading. Now the browser is going to have some defaults for that. The browser is going to have some default appearances for this. And in the case of a top level heading, it makes it in the biggest font, biggest font size. If you notice then the H2s, which are second level headings, teachings and hobbies, are a little bit smaller. Until we get into CSS, we're going to be, you know, the, the way our page looks is going to depend on the default behavior of the browser. And the default behavior for H1s is to make it big text. H2 is a little bit smaller text, and so on down the line. You have H1 through H6, all right? That doesn't mean you can only have six headings. It's six levels of heading. Think in terms of like an outline. All right. Tags come in pairs. You have the starting tag and the ending tag. And again, the analogy I gave last time is like highlighting in a book. Here's where I start my tag. Here's where I end my tag. Everything in between that and that is going to be treated as a top level heading. Everything between here and here is treated as a second level heading. The paragraph starts here and goes here and so on. Now, um, we'll talk about, one of the next topics we'll talk about is nesting, all right? And the idea of nesting relates to the fact that the tags come in pairs, all right? And that if a tag starts in within a tag, it also ends within a tag. So what I have here is proper. This would not be correct. Because the H2 starts within the H1 and it doesn't end within the H1. So that is incorrect. But we'll see more examples of this in a couple minutes. Now one thing that I mention is the way that browsers treat white space. What do I mean by white space? I mean like the blank lines, the spaces, things like that. This is confusing for some students at first because essentially any white space that there is, the browser sort of just kind of ignores it and treats it like it's just a single space. That's kind of weird at first. Like, let's say if I wanted to put space between Mike and Zellers. Save it. Hit refresh. Didn't do anything. All right. So although that may seem puzzling at first, it's actually a good thing. It's a good thing because it allows you to format your code in a way that makes your code more readable. Many of the things that we do in all forms of software development, whether you talk about web development or mobile development or, or traditional software development, things that you do, you do to make your code more maintainable. All right? Almost any guideline that you have, if you're taking a C-sharp class or have taken it, you know, they'll say it's a good idea to put comments in your code, or it's a good idea to give your variables meaningful names, or whatever. Why is that? The computer really doesn't care if you have comments or not. The computer doesn't care what you call your variables. It'll make it easier for you, because one thing we know about software is it's likely to change. It's likely to change for whatever reason. All right, you want to add functionality to your website or your application. Something about the organization changes. Organization A buys out company B. All right? The laws change. Whatever. The world is changing, you know? And uh, your, your software has to change to accommodate that. I was going to slip into a Discovery Channel documentary there for a <laughs> second. I realized that and cut myself up. Yeah, all right. So, you do things to make it more maintainable. So, for example, looking at this, and, and I realize I have the font bigger so it's easier to read, and I could just as well do this, and in that way I can clearly see the start and ending paragraph tag. All right, and I can do the same thing here. And it doesn't affect the way it displays. One thing that's nice too is a browser by default, is like smart, what? <laughs> it's smart, I'm not. The browser is smart enough to do things like wrap around the paragraph. 
So if it's this big, you can see the whole thing. If it gets smaller, it, it does that. This functionality we're going to exploit a little bit later on when we start talking about developing for mobile devices. Because that's actually kind of cool. Because if someone has a big monitor, they might want to be able to see a lot of stuff. If someone's viewing something on a phone, the fact that it sort of collapses it down like that is actually a, a good thing. All right. Okay. So. As I mentioned before, this is really a fragment of a web page. This is missing a few other things that we need to do to make this a complete web page. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some of those things in. All right. First thing that we have is we have a doc type. And for HTML5, which we'll be using, the doc type looks like this. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, right, right. See, see Don Huffman walking with a with a big old uh, radio on his on his shoulder. If if he did that, I would just cancel the classroom today and would I don't know go make a snowman or something. <laughs> All right, so there's a doc type. The next thing we have is we have an HTML tag. The doc type tells the browser specifically what version of HTML we are, we are in. Anything that we do new now on, we should be using HTML5. All right? If you were going back and making changes to a web page that was created you know, so many years back, you might not update it to HTML5 depending on how much time you had to work on it and so on. But if we're doing anything new, which we are in this class, everything's going to be HTML5. This doc type is important because it gives, it gives the browser some hints about how to handle the page. All right. The doc type is, is officially called a declaration. It's, it's not a tag per se, and it doesn't have an ending tag associated with it. It simply says this page is HTML and it's in this format. We then have an HTML tag which wraps around the entire page. And I'm going to go in and indent these to make it more readable and so that I can see at a glance that all these tags are contained within the HTML tag. A lot of times I'll see students not pay too close attention to indenting, and their code is very, very difficult to read, especially when you start getting more involved stuff with a lot of stuff going on. I mean, if you look at me, you can tell that I'm not a person that is terribly concerned with being neat and appearances and so on, all right? Yet, I always make sure my code is indented, all right? What does that tell you? That tells you that it must be pretty important if I'm going to pay attention to it, all right? So, by indenting that, we can see at a glance that this stuff is nested this way, and it's nested correctly. Again, the browser doesn't care, right? I could literally have all this on one long line with no line breaks at all, and the browser is going to figure it out. It's a computer. It, just, it can read the code, right? But if you needed to go back at a later time and make the change, uh, it would be difficult. The HTML page itself is broken down into two main sections, a head and a body. Most of the action that we're going to do is going to be in the body section. Think of the body section as being what is going to be displayed inside the browser window. So this stuff. Anything that gets displayed there is in the body. So I'm going to indent this even more so that I can see that this stuff is part of the body. All right. 
What goes in the head then? Well, eventually we're going to put things such as CSS. All right, we're going to put our CSS in the head section. And eventually we're going to put JavaScript in there. And there's a few other things that you can put in there. But the one thing that we're going to put in there for now is a title tag. Now, the one thing that some students get confused about is the difference between a title and a heading. All right? The heading is what appears in the body. Like that is an H1. The title is going to appear whoops, up here in the, um, what would you call that? The title, title bar? What, whatever that's called. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to deliberately make them different so it's obvious. So I'm going to make a title of CISS First Example. And again, I did it like that because that seems neat to me. I could do this. And it's just the same to the browser. Now if we look, notice the tab title becomes CISS first example. And up on the title bar it says CISS 216 first example. So that is the title and these things are headers. If I minimize this then, well, depending on the operating system, sometimes you will also see. Yeah, there you go. You can, you can see the title popping up there. All right. This then pretty much is a completed web page. Has everything that it needs. Yeah, we're done. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get A's. Um, now, and we've learned really most of, or we've learned a lot about what you need to know about tags, all right? Because all tags work the same. They identify a block of code that you're going to treat in a special way, all right? This is going to be a heading, and then the browser knows by default how to treat a heading. This is going to be a second level heading. The browser knows by default how to treat that, and so on down the line. There's one other thing that we need to learn about tags. And then it's just going to be a matter of learning what all the different tags are. And typically what happens is like the ones that you use all the time, you know really well. And the ones that you don't use as frequently, you go and look up. All right? It's like, like that in most sort of software development. But there's one other concept that we haven't addressed yet. Well, at least one other concept, one, one big concept about tags that we haven't addressed yet. And that is the notion of what's called an attribute. All right? In addition to tags, tags can have attribute, or attributes even. And what is an attribute? An attribute is a characteristic. It's more information about something. In other words, if I were to say, if I were to tell a friend of mine, meet me at my car, they didn't know what my car is, I'd have to give some characteristics of my car so that they don't understand what it is. It's the blue Scion. It has a bunch of bumper stickers on the back. It, maybe even the license plate number, all right? <laughs> it's, it's a car that has the plastic over the back window, all right? Now, those are characteristics. Why? Because it's not enough for me to say, hey, go to my car. Which car? The car in that parking lot. Well, there's a lot of cars in that parking lot. The idea would be the same if I want to create a link. If I want to create a link, I can say, and I can put a tag saying, I want to create a link. Well, a link to what? You know, a link to which of the billion pages out on the web do we want to link to? We have to give more information. So. In the case of a link, a link tag always comes with at least one attribute. And that attribute is what you're linking to. All right? You have to specify, hey, I'm linking to 
this. All right? So, the tag for a link is the A tag. So I'm going to leave some space in here. Then we have our end A tag. But again, that's not enough. What is between the start and end A tag? That's the text that I want to make the link be. In other words, I want, it, I want the word LCCC to be the link. So that's where I'm tagging. I've indicated here's where the link starts, here's where the link ends. I could make this whole paragraph, or I could make the L in LCCC the link. All right? I could do any number of things like that. But you pick what seems to be reasonable, and you pick what seems to be descriptive. All right? Um, sometimes you'll see on a web page links that have titles something like click this or click me or something like that. That's not very good. All right? It's not good for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of them being that people that um, are visually impaired sometimes browse the web using screen reader software and they can tab through and hear all the links. Well if you have 10 links on your page and the, the text for all of them is click me, it's not very descriptive to people like that. All right? And even for people that don't use a screen reader, um, it's hard to remember like well which one of those click me's was for this page, which one was for this other page that I want to go back to. So try to make your links descriptive, the text of the links descriptive. So we already said that's not enough. We need to give some additional information. And that additional information is via an attribute. In the case of a link, to link to another page somewhere out on the internet, the attribute is href. And then you enclose in quotes the URL of the page that you're linking to. All right? And you have to start out with the HTTP. A lot of times what I'll do is bring up the page that I want to link to. and copy it, and then I'll paste it there. And notice that even though the browser line didn't say HTTP, when you copied and pasted it, put it in. You do need that. You need this part if you're linking to a website that's not part of your website. The HTTP colon slash slash says, hey, there's, some, there, there's somewhere out on the web, there is this page. Later on, we'll see how I could link to another page and omit the HTTP for that. But in this case, because it's not a page that I wrote, it's a page elsewhere on the web, um, I, simply have to, I simply need to put HTTP colon slash slash. Now when I go and save this, all right, notice that the LCCC, the words are underlined and the text is blue. If I click on it, I go to that page, and if I go back, the color of the link is now magenta. Why is that? Because I clicked on it, because I visited that link. That's actually very useful navigation, right? Let's say, for example, you were doing research on a subject, and you had a list of pages that you wanted to check out. You know, you find a good website that has links to other websites, and you're clicking through it. The, the, the fact that visited links look different than links that you haven't visited is a good visual cue because like you wouldn't want to click on the same link twice necessarily you know, and get confused and go back to the same page. 
Unless that's what you wanted to do. You know, gee, I want to go back and revisit a page that I've been before. Oh, which one is it? It must be that one because it looks different. So that's a valuable little navigational tip that you can do. Again, we don't control this. That's default behavior of the browser. All right? But one thing I will say is you do need to be aware of the default behavior of the browser when you start getting into CSS and writing your own code to control the appearance of the page. Why do I say that? Well, don't make any text blue and underlined unless it's a link. Otherwise, it will drive your users crazy because they'll see something blue and underlined. Every other page in the world, blue and underlined means a link. They'll sit there clicking on it for 20 minutes. And I actually have an example of this. Yeah. All right. This is my favorite example, and I pray they never correct it because I can never then use it again. Click more below for the complete Northeast Ohio jazz calendar. I'm going to click. It's not working. Oh, click this more. Okay. So. And if I'm not mistaken, oh, no. 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 Yes. No. I thought I remember. I, rem I thought I remember seeing it somewhere on an LC site. Oh yeah. You are required. <laughs> Actually, I, I was helping out a student that wasn't able to see this in Angel in this class. I don't remember who it was. Okay, yeah. yeah, okay, good, good. Well, I didn't that yeah, well, good thing you did. Otherwise, you would have been the one complaining about this today. But again, that, you know, maybe I should pause, you know, I should probably like edit this out of the final video in case anyone from LC administration, or maybe not, maybe they need to know that that's just a poor design choice. Yeah. At any rate, so now we have a link, and we've gone and we've expanded our page to have a link to something else. Now the interesting thing is, is really, as far as concepts go, there isn't a lot more to tags than tags, beginning tags, ending tags, nesting tags, and attributes. So how do you make an image? How do you make an image is a question of what is the tag that I use and what attributes do I need to use? Because you can kind of figure out, gee, there's a lot of images on the web, so I better need to specify which image I want to choose, right? So it's sort of like web pages. If you create a link to a page, there's a lot of pages on the web. I need to be explicit about what page I'm linking to. Well, I need to point to the specific image um, pointing to if I want to do an image. And we'll see an example of that next week. Now, the question you might ask yourself is, what happens if I make a mistake? For example, this is a mistake. Why is that a mistake? Pardon me? It's outside of the P tag. In other words, this link started inside the paragraph. And yet the ending tag for the link is outside of the paragraph. So that is wrong nesting. What happens when you break the rules? <laughs> Here's the odd thing. It depends. All right? When you break the rules, the browser's a real trooper. All right? The browser's going to do its best to sort of try to figure out what it thinks that you meant. And guess what? It's going to get it right sometimes, it's going to get it wrong sometimes. In a case like this, my guess is, is that there's going to be no harm at all. It's going to work just fine. So I go bring that up. I click that. And it brought up the page. So in that particular case, 
the improper nesting didn't really mess anything up. All right. Does that mean that you don't really need to pay attention to that? No. Because you're relying on the browser's ability to kind of figure it out. Guess what? Now, I don't know about this case. This is a pretty simple, it's a pretty simple mistake. But different browsers could treat this differently. In other words, IE could figure it out. Chrome might have an issue with it. It's hard to say. Let's think of another example. What if I forget the t end title tag? I click Save. Wow, look at that. My whole page disappeared. All right. Let's see what happens when I open this in Chrome. Whole page also disappeared. And my guess is Firefox would be the same thing. What happened to my code? Why is it this way? <laughs> and again, usually once a semester I get, I get this happen to students and they panic. You know, they run out the door screaming and, you know, they're really terrified because their whole page that they spent hours on just disappeared. What went wrong? What did the browser do? It did nothing. Exactly. It doesn't know where the title ends because I did not put the end title tag. So it assumes that everything in the whole page is part of the title. All right, it's part of the title. And therefore, as a result, I don't get to see any body of my text. All right. All right. And this is an easy enough one to fix. This, do, this example does bring up an a important point as far as any sort of software development. No matter how bad it seems, <laughs> the problem might just be a small one. All right? In fact, what if I do this? Let's say I don't even forget the end title tag. I just spell it wrong. Same thing. It's like, OK, I got the start of the title tag. I have the end of a tile tag here. I don't know what a tile tag is, so I'm going to kind of ignore that. All right, and so on. Another question. What if I make up a tag? Mike's new tag. What is it going to do? It doesn't do anything. It doesn't know what to do with it, so it kind of ignores the tag and just displays the text as just text. So you might think that's odd, but in a way that's good. Because what if I was using an old browser viewing an HTML5 page that has some new tags in it that the old browser doesn't understand? Well, it's better than blowing up completely. I might not get the full experience, but at least I can kind of see the page. All right. This points to an important concept, and that is when you follow the rules, you stand the best chance of your page looking the way that you intended. When you break the rules, all bets are off. And all bets are off on a browser-by-browser -browser basis. So it's not like every browser is going to make the set do it the, the same way one browser may have an issue with something and display it a certain way another browser may not may take a different guess at what the correct answer is all right this indicates the need to test across 
multiple browsers. Now, for the first few weeks of class, this is a less of an issue because we're not doing anything that earth-shattering here, all right? But as we get on later, and especially when you start throwing in some of the new HTML5 tags, and especially when we start doing things with CSS, that this is going to become a big issue, all right? That really is one of the biggest challenges to web page developers is you can do something that you think is right and yet you don't get the results that, that you wanted. All right? And, you know, uh, you have to go and fix it. Now, we lost Ridgeville and I lost my train of thought at the same time. <laughs> Exactly. Well, it's, it's a distraction. It, re it really is, you know. Um, the examples I showed here were examples where I made a mistake, all right, and the browser guessed and did it a certain way. Even worse than that is when there are bugs in the browser or compatibility issues in the browser. Now, we'll talk more about that later, all right, but... But the people that write browsers are, it's not like they're some kind of superhumans. They're folks just like us, and they make mistakes just like us. And there's a variety of other factors, too, besides browser makers simply being human. All right? What that means, though, is you may code everything exactly by the book, and one particular browser may not display it correctly. Well, guess what? Guess whose problem that is to fix? It's yours. All right? You can't go around and say, tell every user in the world to get rid of this browser and use another browser. I have seen that, and I hate when I see that. I, I, oh, don't get me started on that one. I hate when I see that. All right? These things are standards for a reason. It's the World Wide Web, not the... Chrome Wide Web, or Firefox Wide Web, or Internet Explorer Wide Web, all right? And especially when you start getting into things like mobile devices, that, that muddies the water even further, and further underscores the needs to be standard and do things in a standard way, following what are called web standards for coding. So that's actually the worst part of it, that, that you can still do everything by the book and still end up with bad results. All right? Yeah, and again, you know, you can, you know, what, do you think your, what do you think your boss that, that uh, uh, you know, the, the, the boss who probably uh, barely knows how to turn on their computer and spends all their time in golf meetings and all that, is going to say when you tell them, hey, I coded it right, and it's like, but it still doesn't display right? Yeah, well, then fix it, you know, exactly. All right. Next set of tags we're going to look at relate to lists. And we're going to use these to create links to parts of our page. Similar to what you see on uh, a frequently asked questions uh, page. Let me bring up, let me Google... All right, here's, I guess, a good example as, as any. Are the build CMD and the build SH script still being used? If I click on it, notice I do not go to another page. I simply go to the section of the page that has the answer. So in order to do that, there's two pieces at work here. There's a list, bulleted list, and there are links but the links are different than the links that we created a minute ago. The link that we created a minute ago took me to a whole nother page. 
There's a number of different sorts of links, and we're going to look at several examples of them. All right, so let's go in and let's put here a list Oops. and lists are defined either as ordered lists or unordered list. An unordered list is like a bullet point list. An ordered list is like where the points are numbered. The difference would be um, whether the order really matters or not. For example, on this page I have teaching and then hobbies. I just as well could have done hobbies and then teaching. Right? It, there's no real reason I did it in that order. All right. If, however, I was showing like the ranking in uh, college football, where it mattered, the number one team, that means something, the number two team, that means something, and so on. Or if I was showing what states had the biggest gross national product, the order matters for there. One is different than five. I couldn't interchange one and five without messing things up. All right. So in that case, I'd use an ordered list. But both ordered and unordered lists contain a set of list items. And I'm going to start out just making the list. I'm not going to do the links quite yet. And there we have my list, bulleted points. If I change this to an OL, it becomes ordered, and it'll be numbered 1 and 2, exactly. Keep in mind that a list is a unit of, uh, you know, a list is a group of list items. So some students get confused and will like make a bunch of li, or, or I'm sorry, a bunch of eggs. There's one list in this case. There's a list of the things that I do. All right. Yeah, they're individual items. Then go underneath that. All right. Now, what do you suppose I need to do to make a link out of each of those? I need a, a, an A tag, right? <laughs> href equals, we're going to have to figure that one out. This isn't a separate page. This isn't another page on the internet. This isn't another one of my pages. So I have to tag this with an ID. The way that you go jump to another section of the page is you give an ID. And I say ID equals pound sign T, for example. Yeah, that definitely would be a age test, whether you call this a pound sign or a hashtag. Uh, all right, whoops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I give it an ID. That allows me to identify it, all right, as the word ID implies. And now when I create the, um, wait a minute, my, I'm sorry, I don't put the pound sign there. I put the pound sign here. I lost my head for a second. <laughs> All right. So to create a link to the section of my page that I want to go to, I have to do two things. I have to give the section of the page a specific ID. 
So I put the ID here indicating that's the teaching section of my page. I put the ID of H here indicating this is the hobby section of my page. I then, when I create a link, say href equals pound sign T. The pound sign at the beginning indicates this isn't another page. This is an ID within this page. All right. So now, if we go and view this, Yeah, well, we'll do this then. And then I click on teaching, and I go there. And I click hobbies, I go there. <laughs> How do you go to the top of the page? All right. You could do this a couple different ways. I could put an ID of top on the H1, or... Go back to the page. Oh, my God, I see those everywhere. Exactly. Or... This is one you actually get for free. The pound sign by itself simply means top of the page. <laughs> so if I say a href equals pound sign, yeah, you don't you don't even you don't need to I even create an ID for that. You can just say back to top. And then whatever you want the link to say, again, exactly, is that. <laughs> Back to top. There we are at the top of the page again. <laughs> well, well, we'll work on that for the next one. <laughs> This is only in beta. We'll work on that for the, for the full release. All right. Um, this is enough for today, I think. Uh, we will continue for the next while or so learning more tags. There are a whole set of new HTML5 tags to describe different sections of the page. For example, you could call this like a little mini navigation, all right? And this is kind of a section, and this is kind of a separate section. So there's tags that you can use to sort of break a big page down into several sections. So that'll probably be the next topic that we have. Then we'll get into images and text formatting and all that stuff. Any questions? All right, let's go to lab. Any questions at North Ridgeville? You okay? Okay.